What is the difference? The difference is that this aggression of capitalism led by the current government in power, the BJP government, is combined with a bigger agenda. And it is that agenda led by the BJP and the RSS which is driving politics, culture, economics, social relations in India today. So while these challenges have always existed before us, what we understand through our own experience is, it is different because today you have in state power those forces who want to challenge the very existence, not a great existence, but as I said, a constitutional and legal existence of India and women as we know it today. What is that agenda? That agenda described by their own ideologues. Wo agenda kya hai? Kya paribhasha hai? Ye hamara paribhasha nahi hai. कि हम बता रहे हैं कि बीजेपी आरएसएस का क्या एजेंडा नहीं उनके अपने विचारों को ने क्या बताया उस एजेंडा में हिंदू राष्ट्र मैं ये कहती हूं आज ये हिंदू शब्द नहीं इसको हिंदुत्व राष्ट्र बोलो एंड आई डिलिब्रेटली यूज द वर्ड हिंदुत्व राष्ट्र बिकॉज़ दे ले क्लेम दैट दे आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग अ रिलीजन in fact, the whole concept of Hindutva is a naked, blatant political concept to impose on India an agenda which is directly opposed to the values, the cultures, the traditions that India stands on today. And this is described by their own ideologues. I, I, all those quotes are there, you can read it. So that is the first thing. The agenda in which capitalism is exploiting us more, in which social relations are deteriorating. So pehle ye overall jo ye agenda hai, very priya behno, ye antar hai. Pujivad ke khilaaf hum log lade hai. Social ke khilaaf lade hai. यूनिटी के लिए हम लोग लड़े हैं लेकिन आज एक एजेंडा के तहत ये लड़ाई है उसको हम समझते हैं एंड द सेकंड पॉइंट इज व्हाट डू दे मीन व्हेन दे से हिंदुत्व राष्ट्र व्हाट डज इट मीन व्हाट डज इट मीन वी हैव हर्ड इट इन द क्रूडेस्ट ऑफ टर्म्स बाय द भोपाल एमपी वो क्या नाम है उनका ये भोपाली जो हमारे बहने हैं प्रज्ञा थैंक यू नाम भी लेना इस मंच से क्या बोली नफरत चाकू हमारे दुश्मन जो दूसरे धर्म एक और धर्म जो हमारा धर्म का नहीं है वो हमारा दुश्मन सो दैट एंटी माइनॉरिटी एस्पेक्ट of this Hindutva Rashtra is very, very clear. And that is partly what this CAA was all about, to change the very citizenship of India. But what do they also mean by this Hindutva? What is the ideology? And that is where what Malika ji referred to as a text which is accepted by so many millions and crores of people all over India the Manusriti. And those who have never accepted the constitution from 1950 who have demanded that Manusriti should be the base for India, that is the core of Hindutva. Hindutva ka jo kendra hai, jo samajik rishte bante hai, us vichar ki aadhar par जो उसकी सांस्कृतिक उसका जो रिफ्लेक्शन होता है वो मनुस्मृति में पाया जाता है तो एक 
taraf. So on the one hand, you have the Hindutva Rashtra agenda determined and defined by the RSS and the BJP. And on the other hand, you have the definition of what they mean by Hindutva Rashtra, grossly anti-minority, but not just anti-minority, whatever is there in the Manusmriti to support the toxic caste system in India, to support and strengthen patriarchal notions and practices, that is the ideal, unstated, unsaid, but constantly the target. So this is the same. اور آج اس سمیلن میں آپ لوگ اس پر بحث کریں گے میں اس کی ڈیٹیلز میں نہیں جا رہی ہوں کیا کیا مثالیں ہیں لیکن آج آپ سوچئے جب آپ پوجی وات کے خلاف آپ کی لڑائی ہے جب سمانتا کی لڑائی ہے جب مہنگائی کی خلاف جڑائی ہے جب شکشہ کے لیے سواس کے لیے لڑائی ہے وہاں اگر یہ سرکار پوجی وات کی اگرسر روپ اپنا کر اس کے ساتھ ساتھ ہماری من کو ہماری دل کو ہماری دماغ کو اس کو کیپچر کرنے کا پریاس کر رہے ہیں اس کو بدلنے کا پریاس کر رہے ہیں یہ قانون جو بن رہے ہیں یہ لب جہاد یہ انٹی کنورشن یہ سارے جو قانون بن رہے ہیں یہ اسی آدھار پر ہے ان کا اپنا اجنڈا So everything that we see is linked to this one agenda. Now we have our own struggles, we have our own ideas, we have our own agendas. We are not going to be only following their agenda. But in every agenda we seek to fulfill, we are met with this ideological barrier, with the policy barrier, And worst of all, the use of state power to promote this agenda. Raj Satta ki taakat istamal kar ke usko kare. So the second aspect of this which I want to speak about are the linkages. Jab, when we fight for women's justice, today more than ever before Ambedkar's words about the linkages of the various Pillars of the constitution are so much more clear in our minds of how correct he was. My dear sisters, you cannot think of women's advance without democracy. You cannot think of democracy without secularism. What would it mean if we lived in a non-secular state where religion and religious texts decided what we were to do. As it is, we are seeing what is happening in the rest of the world. But here in India, Articles 14 and 15 of the Constitution of India, what does it say? We the people of India, not we Hindu women, Muslim women, Christian women, etc. So the linkages between secularism, democracy, and our own fight for equality are very, very closely linked. And it is this linkage, I believe, in the coming days, which is going to decide how successful we are going to be in our fight against this toxic, communal, casteist, corporate regime. So this is the connection, اس کو مت سمجھو ایک سیکلرزم کے لیے کیونکہ وہ تو کہہ رہے ہیں سیکلرزم ہی ہٹا دو چاہے سپریم کورٹ نے کہہ دیا یا بیسک سٹرکچر آف کانسٹیوشن ہے سیکلرزم جنواد سمانتا یہ سب جو اس کے سمبند ہے بہنوں یہ آنترک سمبند ہے جو آج ہمارے آنے والے دنوں میں جو ہمارے چنوتیاں ہیں ان چنوتیوں کو سامنا کرنے کے لیے یہ جو سمبند ہے اس کو ہمیں ضرور سمجھنا آنترک روپ پر سمجھنے کی ضرورت ہے اور اسی کے آدھار پر ہمیں آگے بڑھنے کی ضرورت ہے and along with that in our strategies to fight all this
you're going to discuss the details in your uh, report and your discussions. I'm not going into any details, but I would just like to say that in 40 years of AIDWA, the issue of violence against women has been a very critical issue we have fought against. Hinsa, mahilao ki khilaf aur unki shariro ki upar sochan aur hinsa, ye hamara hamesha ek bada mudda raha hai. I just give you one example of how secularism and democracy and women's rights are linked. What is happening now in the struggle against violence against women? What happened with Bilkis Banu? A woman who was gang raped, her mother, her sister, her three-year-old child torn from her arms and brutally smashed. Eighteen members of her family killed. And a couple of <laughs> those cruel criminals and a couple of guys sitting in the Gujarat government under the patronage of the Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah, signs a release bond. Where does it come from? You know about Shraddha Walkar case. A young woman in a relationship is brutalized by some man she trusted. She was brutally killed. Her body was dismembered in the most cruel, barbaric way. That man has to be punished. The stringent and strictest of punishments. But what do the rulers of India say? Our sisters from Assam are here. It is a shame that Assam chief minister goes to Gujarat to campaign and says, because Shraddha Walker's the perpetrator's name was Aftab, belonging to the Muslim community. He says, if you don't want any Aftabs in the cities of India, vote for Modi, the strong man of India. Our movement, not just Edwa, all the organizations who have fought for laws, for change, for recognition, Remembering Mathura, that young Adivasi girl. We have fought for justice. We have not said what caste, what religion does the perpetrator belong to. 86 women are raped every day on average in India. More than 6,000 women are burnt to death for dowry every day, every year in India. More than four lakh cases of domestic abuse and violence are registered in India. Are they all aftabs? You want to communalize crime against women? You want to ask me, do I know the religion of my rapist? And when it is a question of caste, when it is a question of caste, atrocities against Dalit women, then you stand in favor of your manuva, the ideology, and support the upper caste. So this is what it means when you have communalism, when secularism becomes a dirty word, when anybody who raises their voice is thrown into jail like Tista was. Those are the linkages and violence against women, the gravest danger, and please don't underestimate it, because the courts, the police, the different wings of the state all being taken over by the BJP government, compromised, their autonomy being smashed, the National Commission of Women, the shame of it, we fought for it. Malanidhi and Subhashini were there in parliament at that time. We fought for it. Women's movements outside and our women MPs inside parliament for autonomy. And this is a national commission which does not say a word on Bilkis Manu, does not say a word on this horrible thing, and now this 
this uh, sexual harassment in Haryana, the sports coach, they are defending the minister. What is this? Communalization of crimes against women is going to be the greatest disaster for us. Those are the linkages. And women are at the center of it. Our bodies, our minds, we are the repositories of all the cultures, that all the centuries of exploiters and patriarchal notions and practices want to impose on any society. It is us. Hum hai, jo iske maidan hai, ye tamam shaktiyon ki, jis pe unki nafrat bhare awaze, unki nitya, unki samaj, unki vichar, hamari sharir par. So we are at the center of this cultural, social, economic assault on India. We are the center, India's women. And you, my dear beloved sisters of Edwa, you, with your links with the mass of women, are best place. You have taken up the challenge. I congratulate you, I congratulate the leaders of Edwa. In the worst of times in COVID, you reached out, you energized the organization, and you broke that barrier of silence. So congratulations to our Edwa leadership, the teamwork at the center in the States. It has been a very inspiring uh, read of the conference reports. And I'm sure all of you working together as Edwa will also reach out to once again mobilize and strengthen the united women's movements. It is essential today to provide that platform on an issue-based or a wider platform that is up to you to decide. But in strengthening our independent work, we need also very much to strengthen our role in bringing individuals, professionals, intellectuals, women's organizations and groups across India together to challenge, to resist, and to defeat these dark forces represented by the BJP and the RSS. I once again thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much. Aid was Zindabad, 13 conference, Zindabad. Thank you.